Hey guys, it's Flare Blitz Banana here, and happy 20th anniversary to Pokemon. I mean, I'm sure you guys all know I'm a huge Pokemon fan. I started playing Pokemon way back when I was 7 years and uh, 364 days old. And um, I played Pokemon Diamond way back in 2008. That's not as far back as some people, I am well aware of that, but... You know, for me, Diamond's really nostalgic, but today, as you could probably tell by the title and probably what you're seeing on screen right now, we're not here to talk about that. We are here to talk about Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Sky. This game has had a big impact on me, and I want to share with you guys why. Uh, just so you guys know, you know, I know people want to call me on the comments and say that I'm pathetic and stuff and stupid, but... You know, when you're nine years old, which is how old I was when I played this game, it means a lot more to you, and that kind of carries on into the future when you're older. Uh, for those wondering, I'm 15 years old right now, trudging through high school, trying to stay alive. But anyway, you guys don't care too well. Some people might care about that, but you, what you really came here for was the story about Mystery Dungeon. It's gonna be very long. I'm gonna talk about it as much as I can. I've actually. This is not the first time I've told this story. I posted it in a comment on a Glitch X City remix for Through the Sea of Time, which is kind of the national anthem for Mystery Dungeon fans, other than the main theme. But, um, I'll just, yeah. Oh, I need to lay down the, tell you guys right now. Okay, first of all, this is going to be improvised. I have some notes, but I, it's... I'm gonna probably stutter a lot, I'm just gonna be retelling the story. But there will be spoilers in this, but I will give you a warning before uh, the spoiler- before I talk about anything plot related to Explorers of Sky. That'll happen pretty early on, but I'll tell you guys, I put a big circle next to the part in my notes where spoilers come around. Now, let's speak in the actual story, shall we? My- this Explorers of Sky was not my first Mystery Dungeon game, actually. My first Mystery Dungeon game was Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Blue Rescue Team, believe it or not. I played that. I got that for Christmas 2008. Yeah, I think so. And I love that game to death. The gameplay was great. And I really liked the characters and stuff. They were all fun. It was so different. It was fun to be able to play as a Pokemon, something I never expected. I didn't even know this game existed until I got it on Christmas. I, in fact, it didn't even come in the actual game box. So it came in the some used store game box thing. I don't even remember what it looked like. I, I think it had like a secret agent on something. I don't know something. Maybe it had James Bond. I don't know. But the point is that uh, I was very surprised. I didn't know what this game was. I tried it. Loved it. And yeah, that was Blue Rescue Team, but the thing is, being very young at the time, I had a hard time truly grasping the true meaning of the story. I, I mean, I kind of understood it, but it didn't have that much of it, as big of an impact as me, as Explorers of Sky did, because I couldn't quite comprehend it. I do remember uh, being kind of scared during the whole chase part, I'm not going to spoil exactly what happens there, but go ahead and play R Blue or Red Rescue Team if you haven't. So yeah, that was very enjoyable, but then later on down the line, I saw ex a time. A time. I saw a time, yes, a time. Explorers of them. Explorers of time. I really wanted Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, Explorers of time. Or Darkness. I wanted time because I chose Diamond version, so I thought, oh, maybe that'll have Dialga. Turns out both versions had an equal amount of Dialga-ness. Spoilers, except not really. But, <laughs> uh, no spoilers yet, by the way. But I just didn't have the money at the time. I think, I think like, the, I, I think I had just bought a Wii or something. Maybe? I don't think I had a Wii yet, but... Uh, besides, that's kind of, maybe I did, but I just spent my money on something else, and I didn't have the money for time, or darkness. 
and I was so sad because they did an anime special on it, and while I don't like the Pokemon anime now, you know, I thought that was so cool that they did an anime special for Explorers of Sky. They did one for, or sorry, Explorers of Time. They did do one for Sky eventually, but I didn't see that until years later. They did do one for, um, Blue Rescue Team, and I thoroughly enjoyed that. I'm like, oh yeah, that's my game. But, I just really wanted time. Then, one day I went to Target, and uh, I thought, maybe I'll find a game that I want. And I decided to bring my money, which I rarely did as a kid. I still don't, am not in the habit of bringing my wallet everywhere, but I should get into that. It's just that I don't need all that much, I don't want to bring it to school, because I don't want to risk losing it, because I'm paranoid. But besides that, uh, bes that's besides the point. When I got to the store, I saw something I didn't expect, I had never even heard of. And that was Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Sky. And it blew my mind that this was there and that I had just so happened to bring my money that day. I didn't know this game existed. And I was completely dumbfounded that I finally had the opportunity and I was... And then, in my brain, I was laughing to, at those who bought Time or Darkness, because now I have Sky. And I knew that was the third version. I knew about Platinum. Never played Platinum, but um, I knew Platinum was the thing. I'm like, oh, this is the Mystery Dungeon Platinum. So I bought that, of course, and played it. And yeah, it was Mystery Dungeon. It was great. So now here's how I'm going to start talking about the plot, because, of course, it's a Mystery Dungeon game, and the plot's very important. If you haven't played it yet and you want to play without spoilers which I highly recommend go ahead and stop watching now so I have a few memories of the game uh, stuff like taking out drowsy and one of the things I remember well is the expedition where you have to go on this exploration thing with the guild and you go to this place and you find the time gear thingy and all that good stuff but uh, I, I just, something about the Time Gears just seemed interesting. They were so mysterious, as the name of the series implies. There was a lot of mystery surrounding it, and the graphics that they showed for the Crystal Lake, I think it was called, no, it wasn't Crystal Lake. Fogbound Lake, that's what it was called. That was really pretty, I really liked that. So, yeah, that was pretty nice. But then things got a little more interesting when they introduced a certain character called Dusknoir. And I always thought, I thought Dusknoir was a really cool character. Everyone in the game was like, Dusknoir's the greatest person ever. And I thought Dusknoir was going to be this game's Alakazam. For those of you who don't know in Red and Blue Rescue Team, I, uh, there, there was an Alakazam who was like this all-knowing wise guy who would help you out um, and give you hints tips and stuff on the game, and he was kind of the character that you wanted to be. So I thought Dusknoir was going to be that guy, and then I found out about a certain character called Grovile. Any Mystery Dungeon fan knows that name. Um, he, had, he, in the game, he was starting to steal the Time Gears, which, according to Dusknoir, if all of them were stolen, then the planet would become paralyzed, and that that was just so cool. And I thought, oh, this is cool. We ha I have a character I want to hunt down. This is great. So I decided, man, I'm saying the same thing a lot, aren't I? But I decided that I wanted to dedicate myself to hunting down Grovile. And every step of the way, I was thinking, am I gonna find Grovile? Am I gonna find Grovile? I finally did find Grovile. I forget exactly where it is where you first fight Grovile. It's either Crystal lake or the underground lake one of the two lakes but uh i man i remember so vividly so well fighting grovile for the first time i was uh i was uh on my way to the eye doctors to get my eyes checked out to see if i needed new glasses and man i i, I got to the part with where i was supposed to fight grovile i started the fight and then my mom made me get out because I had to go get my eyes checked. But then I, I just, as soon as I was out of the doctor's appointment, I sprinted to the car and opened the door, except I couldn't because I had to wait for my mom to unlock it. And it was just painful, painful, I tell you, waiting to get back in the car because I wanted to beat Grovile so badly. 
but eventually I did get in, and I beat him! And then the game's like, well, because plot, Grovile beat you. Oh! That's nice! So... That, that kind of sucked. But I was kind of disappointed, but I'm like, okay, we need it for plot, I'll probably encounter Grovile later on. So plot happens, so I don't remember the plot too well. Um, I remember it fairly well, though, because lately I've been watching Shady Penguins Let's Play of Explorers of Sky. And... Basically, at some point, Dust Norris decides, we're gonna set a trap for Grovile. And it's like, oh, okay, I, I'm, in my nine-year-old mind, I'm thinking, okay, the trap is gonna, like, not work, and we're gonna have to fight Grovile ourselves, because I, I knew that I, or at least I thought that I'd have to be the one to defeat Grovile. I thought that was, like, that was gonna be, like, the end of the game. Grovile would be probably not the final boss, but a minion of the final boss. And then I get the time gears back, and yay, I win the game. No! Actually, uh, Dusknor captured Grovile by himself! And I was honestly kind of depressed, because I wanted to catch Grovile myself, and Dusknor was like, Okay, I'm gonna take Grovile back to the future, and, uh, how- I don't know if I should even bother describing it for people who haven't pay played the game, because I'm assuming that you already know how the game goes, if you're watching this, because I gave the spoiler warning, everyone! But, um... Basically, to refresh your memory, you know, there's the crowd, and the, and there's that portal, and Dustnor's there with the Sableye, and they have captured Grovile, they have him all tied up and muzzled. And then they push him through the portal, and back into the future, where Grovile and Dustnor are from, which I forgot to mention, but this is an, an in-depth analysis of the- Well, this, this is- I'm not trying to describe the plot too well, I'm just trying to describe how I reacted to it. And... Yeah, I thought, oh, well, Grovile's been captured. I guess that's going to be the end of this half of the game. I assumed that there would be another story arc, and the game would be kind of split into two story arcs. And then Duskmore called myself and my partner up, and he's like, You two are coming with me! And he grabbed us and pulled us in the portal, I'm like, WHAT?! Duskmore, you traitor! And then I thought and realized, oh yeah, he's a ghost type. Well, that makes sense that he's a traitor. So I honestly felt kind of stupid for not realizing Dusknor was the traitor, and I knew Grovile was actually the good guy. <clears throat> so, of course, he uh, dragged us into the future, and then we then things got really scary. Going back and playing it, I'm sure I wouldn't be scared, but being nine years old, the future scared me. It was all dark, wind never blows, so spring or lover never comes, Etern perpetual darkness, it's dark and death. Well, I don't know about death, there's a lot of ghost types, so, I don't know, I guess they murdered a bunch of people, or Pokemon, because there's no people here. Anyway, oh, what am I even talking about? Oh yeah, so they throw you in a jail cell, right? And I started to get a little bit scared, I'm like, oh, well, that's a first for a Pokemon game. And then the sable I tie you up to a stake and start scratching you to death. And man, all they need to make this worse is for it to be a Charizard instead of Fury Swipes, and it would be all Joan of Arc ish. So, whew, that that was kind of a scary experience for me as a kid. But then uh, we escape, of course. I figured that I'd escape, but still kind of scary. And then it's out into the world of darkness, and that scared me a lot. And I thought, oh, we're gonna team up with Grovile, and he's like, see ya! So that was. <laughs> Grovile just leaves us. And then I started to get really scared going through parts of the game. I remember specifically the Dark Hill was so hard for me to pass, and it, it was all this darkness, and it was scary, and I it just got to the point. Well, I stopped playing the game for a while. I actually gave up because it, I was, it was too challenging and too scary for me. I'm pretty sure I was didn't know how moves and items worked back then too well, so... Of course, I got stuck a lot, but I eventually persevered and made it through after a while. And met up with Grovile, and then we, like, did it, we teamed up or something, and then found Celebi, and then Portal, and... Primal Dialga showed up and started attacking Grow by a lot or something, I think. I don't remember too much of that part of the game, but anyway, basically we made it back to the present 
And there's an interesting scene that I kind of liked. Where Grovile is talking with a partner character. Oh, by the way, I'm sure people are going to ask. I was a Pikachu and my partner was a Chimchar. So I'm just going to say Pikachu. Or I guess I for the player character. And for the partner, I'm just going to say Chimchar. So Chimchar and Grovile. Um, they are meeting at the top of the cliff and they start talking. Right? And... As they're talking, the sun comes up, and Grovile kind of remarks on how he has never seen a sunrise before in his life, because his whole life, the planet has been paralyzed. So, that, that really made me think, as a kid, about being appreciative for the things that I have. And it's, you know, it's, it's a good message, because something as simple to you as the sunrise might be a very incredible treat for someone else. Or it might not be there the next day, like, it, a real-world experience. This might get kind of dark, but one day you have your home, and then the next day it gets destroyed by something unforeseen, you know? So, always value what you have, no matter how, how much you think it'll be there forever. So after that heartfelt scene, a lot of stuff happens that I'm like, I don't even re- All I remember is Chimchar's Relic Fragment, the Ale whole game, finally had plot significance and fit into some place to summon Lapras, who would take us through a portal or something to get to this place called the Hidden Land, okay? This is where I start actually remembering the game very, very well. Uh, the Hidden Land was a fairly challenge. well no, it wasn't that challenging, because I had Grovile with me, and man, Grovile was really strong, but... Together, we made it through the Hidden Land, and I remember so specifically saying to myself, David, Chimchar, and Grovile are all Team Poke Pals, and together they will beat Primal Dialga, or something like that. Again, I was nine. Come on, I, of course I say something childish like that. And, man, I... I just... I was so excited to go up there and defeat Primal Dialga with Grovile on my team, because I knew I'd be unstoppable with Grovile. But then that scene happened, the famous through the sea of time scene. Uh, I got to through the hidden land into what I think they called the Rainbow Stone Ship, and then suddenly Dust Door appears and attacks with him and his army of Sableye. It took me a little while to beat Dust Door, actually. I think it took me like three tries to beat him. But then I finally beat him, and I'm like, "You're done, Dust Door. Let's move on. See you later." But then. He gets up and punches my character in the face and is about to gro drag me through the portal, but then Grovile stops him. And any Mystery Dungeon fan knows exactly what happens. Grovile kind of picks up Dustnor and starts pushing him through it's towards the portal with some of the best music Pokemon has ever had before. The iconic Through the Sea of Time theme that I mentioned earlier. And it was just really hard because th for me to watch this because the whole game, Grovile was my favorite character. And seeing him seeing him basically die, like that that was death. To or at least as far as I knew, later on the special mission we think Grovile didn't actually die, but that that was it, you know. Or well I, it was just you know, I, I was really sad because goodbye, Grovile. But and I was, uh, it's kind of hard. To, it's just weird. It's really hard to talk about because it's a very personal thing. But again, this video is not super high quality. This is kind of last minute. But. Yeah, rest in peace, Grovile. He uh, died for me basically, and I had to go and fight without him. I had to climb Temporal Tower and slay the God of Time without the overpowered character. Oof, okay. This is probably the hard, the most difficult experience I've ever had with a video game that I have overcome. I... It took me, I'm not even kidding, months to beat this part. And I tried and tried. 
and eventually I decided to ask for help from my friend Joe. Now there, this Joe guy, when I was in third grade, he was a really nice guy. He rode my bus and he was two grades above me. I was in third grade, he was in fifth grade. And he uh, always gave me advice for these games. He gave me advice for spirit games like Spirit Tracks, some crappy Goosebumps game on my DS, all that good stuff. But when I told him that I had made it to Temporal Tower, he said, You should probably just stop now, because the final boss is impossible to beat. He said that he could not beat Primal Dialga, and that it just wasn't possible, and the game developer is just, it's like a glitch or something. It's just not possible. And that didn't make sense to me, because, well, it's a game, shouldn't everything be possible, shouldn't every boss be possible? I'd never played a game where a boss was impossible, literally impossible, and you couldn't beat the game. And I'm just like, no, it, it's gotta be possible, there has to be a way. So I kept climbing Temporal Tower, got to Primal Dialga, died. Climbed again, got to Pri Primal Dialga, died. Roar of Time, spam, Dragon Claw, whatever else you use. Death, death, death. I keep losing over and over and over again for... It, this fight took me two to three months to beat. Until I gave up. Just gave up for about a month. But then I decided that I wanted to try it again. So, I started trying again. And it took me a w quite a while still, but I didn't want to give up. And every... T and after the first time I gave up for like a month, I started thinking, no, I have to do this to see what happens with Grovile. Because I th figured that after I beat the game, I'd be able to rescue Grovile. And the whole time I was doing it for this amazing character. And eventually, eventually, on one of my many treks up the tower, I found an item that altered everything that changed how I played the game, how I did the Primal Dialga boss fight. And that item was a Vanish Seed. Vanish Seeds, I have no idea how rare these items are, and Vanish Seed might be the rarest item in the whole game. What it does is it turns your Pokemon invisible. Yep. And basically it makes it so that Primal Dialga won't focus on me. So what I did is I grabbed that, uh, I grabbed that Vanish Seed, made it to the top of the tower, without dying luckily, that would've been so bad if I died, I probably would've just software reset. And I used the Vanish Seed on myself and kinda hit off to the side, while my partner took all the damage and I spammed him with Orin Berries. And somehow, thanks to the Vanish Seed, my large supply of orange berries, determination, and uh, roar of time missing a couple times because that move is broken. I defeated Primal Dialga, and then came the sad scene—the scene where your character dies and you have to say goodbye to your partner. But I did not care. I did not care at all that my character was dying right before my partner's eyes, Chimchar's eyes, and that Chimchar was crying, and that he had, to, and that he was, it was difficult for him to get home alive because of how sad he was. <laughs> I didn't even care. I was just happy to beat the game, and I know that sounds so heartless because I know a lot of people have cried at that scene, but I was just so unbelievably happy to beat that part of the game and I didn't cry at all the only time I cried in the game was when Grovile disappeared and that's the only time a game has ever made me cry or a movie hasn't either and again nine years old but man I just did not care and I knew that my character would come back after the credits I knew that because that happened in blue rescue team and I saw it coming a mile away it was still a nice scene, but I didn't cry because I was just happy to beat the game. And I was at my grandma's house when I beat the game, and that would have been kind of weird. So after I did that, I decided that I had enough with the game and put it away. Hey! 
heck no! I played the crap out of the post game. I oh man, the post game right off the bat. I remember the first thing doing. Guess what? You get to graduate from the Expedition Society. What? That's so cool. That was so cool, and it was great being able to move out and then going to the Shaman Village. And after the Shaman Village, I remember unlocking a special story. And before the special stories, I really didn't care, because I didn't care too much about the other characters. But then that fifth story arc that you get after beating the Shaman Village Grovile story arc. That, that blew my mind that Grovile got a story arc. I didn't even think about that. Because after I beat the credits, I thought I'm I was just sitting there thinking, where's Grovile? What happened to Grovile? Aren't I supposed to get Grovile? So I decided to do the special mission to see what happened. And I must have done the special mission like 20 times. I, I absolutely love that special episode. Basically, it's about Grovile traveling through time, or not through time, but traveling through the future with Dust Noir, trying to stop Primal Dialga, and just doing whatever he can. And there isn't any, well, I shouldn't say there's nothing too... Well, yeah, there's there are some good quotes and stuff in there, but I'm not going to recite those. But it was just refreshing for me to know that at the end of it, Grovile and everyone did in fact survive, and all the evil guys turned good because it's a Pokemon game, but... This time they actually had reason. And I like that. It, it, it made a lot more sense. Because after seeing the beauty of the present without darkness, Dustmore realized that he shouldn't just let Dialga win, he should actually do something about it. So, I really like this special episode. Then I went back to the post game. It took me quite a while to beat it, especially the final Dark Ride boss. Not as long as Dialga, but it definitely took me a while. Cresselia, honestly, was pretty weak compared to my guys. I didn't really like being forced to keep Cresselia alive. But eventually I did conquer Dark Ride, and I, I thought Dark Ride was a really interesting character. I like how it was actually him playing the screens the whole time. I think that's really, looking back on it, that's really cool how you, they, you actually have to do the post game and you get a sudden plot twist that it explains everything in the game. It's like, well, pretty much any plot hole is filled at that point thanks to Dark Ride. There's probably some things I can nitpick, but don't want to concentrate on that. And that, yeah, that was it. I beat the post game and then I started working on trying to collect all the legendaries, but then... Something happened. I was at a Red Lobster, and suddenly the game crashed. I was ready to evolve, but then the game just went blank as soon as I evolved. And I'm like, wait, what's going on? Why why won't you let me evolve? I try again to evolve. It says, no, you can't do it. I'm like, fine, I'll just play without evolving. I go into a dungeon without evolving, it crashes. Then take the game out. Blow on it, put it back in. The game pops up on the DS menu, but then when I click on it, nothing happens. Take it out, blow on it again, all NES cartridge style. And still, this time, the game didn't even pop up in the menu. And I was pretty sad, but I wasn't as sad as before, because I've actually, I actually have lost a Pokemon game before. Pokemon Heart Gold, that was a terrible day. And I lost that in the same... Red at the same Red Lobster. I lost it in that parking lot. And this wasn't at Red Lobster, but I had burned out a game before too, like I thought I had with Explorers of Sky, and that was uh, Scribble Knot. So at this point, I was used to it, so I decided to put the game away, and I didn't touch it for four whole years. So now, flash forward all the way to 2014. At this moment in time, I am a huge Munching Orange fan, and I see that he has started a Let's Play of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, Explorers of Sky. He never did finish this Let's Play, but at the time, you know, I was pretty hyped for it because I really like Sky, and it started bringing back memories. And, you know, I was... Before I had kind of tried to suppress those memories because I was sad about losing my game, but I wasn't too upset about it at this point. But eventually, I I couldn't stop thinking about Sky. I kept going online and reading articles about it, things 
that people have to say. And it eventually got to the point where I got really... I was really starting to get, I guess you could say, sky sick. And not, like, not homesick, or but sky sick, or... I don't know. So, I just wanted the game back really bad at this point. So, at some point at night, I decided... Uh, that I was going to try I, to find my game, and it was in my little case, my this plastic case I have of DS games I never play. I still kept the cartridge, even though it, it didn't work, and I decided to pop it in, pop it in my DS, and nothing. So I put it away. But then I decided just to try again. So I blew on the cartridge, all NES style, and then. It popped up on my menu for my DS, and I realized, wait a minute, maybe there's hope. I click on it, but then it crashes. So then I take the cartridge out again and blow on it, and this time, actually praying, literally praying, that it the game works. And I pop it back in, and I'm just sitting there, eyes closed, praying, and then I hear the Mystery Dungeon theme. And that is why I love Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, Explorers of Sky. Now, since then, uh, for those wondering, their Explorers of Sky, of course, has affected my life since then, you know. It's given me a lot of conf a big confidence boost because of this story, this incident. And for those wondering, interestingly enough, my game is glitched, and I cannot evolve any Pokémon. If I try to evolve a Pokémon, the game will crash. But other than that, the game works perfectly fine. And I don't even play that often because it feels kind of weird going back to it, but... I don't know, I, I went back to it and I saw I had partially started the Grovile story, the Grovile mission. And I played through that and played and beat it, and man, it was just crazy. And then I eventually decided to go back to my old profile, and it felt like I never left. I remember everything. I remembered what my team was. I remember the, my movesets. My team was Pikachu, Chimchar, Shaman, and Azumaro. I still, they were still there. And it was just so. I can't even describe it. But yeah, since then, Sky Explorers of Sky is definitely my favorite Pokemon game of all time. Favorite game period is tough. I don't know if it's either that or Earthbound, as I've mentioned before. But yeah, it's, uh, other things Mystery Dungeon related. Even though Munching Orange never finished his, his Sky Let's Play, uh, Shady Penguin started doing one, and I'm a huge fan of his right now. So. That's really fun to watch. Um, oh, I'm sure a lot of people are going to ask if I'll do an Explosive Sky Let's Play in the future. Eventually, but for now, um, I kind of want to just focus on Nuzlocke and that sort of thing. Uh, I definitely do plan on doing Explosive of Sky as well as remaking this video because I didn't do a very good job in this. I want to make it scripted in the future. But... I don't know if there's really anything else to say, you know, Sky, Explorers of Sky had a big impact on my life because of that story I talked about, and I don't know if that counts as a miracle or something, but it kind of is, at least to me. But that is why Pokemon is such a huge thing for me, why I love Explorers of Sky, and why I'm hoping that Pokemon sees another 20 years of success, and I'm sure it will, because with all the money they're making, it's not stopping anytime soon. So anyways guys, I'm gonna split, and I hope to see you guys in the next video.